University of Jena, who's going to tell us about evolutionary game theory for microbial communities. Oh yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, yeah, I have to apologize again because my laptop has some technical problems, therefore I had to recycle an older presentation, uh, uh, but it's very similar to what I wanted to present today and I w will adapt it to microbial communities, but the title is different as you see. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for that. Um, so yeah, actually yesterday I mentioned already Charles Darwin, uh, survival of the fittest, so uh, I think this was... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, or, or this shows us that optimality uh, plays an important role in biology, you know, the fittest, so it's an optimal uh, organism will survive and uh, less optimal, um, maybe the second best and third best will also survive, but then the poorer organisms will die out. And um, yeah, actually in Jena uh, we had Ernst Haeckel, uh, uh, famous evolutionary biologist, um, yeah, so we, um, there's some tradition also in Jena about that. And um, yeah, but um, what should also be acknowledged is that evolution is very often co-evolution. As we have seen in the previous talk, there is co-evolution of two different uh, subpopulations. And, um, and therefore, not always, but sometimes the theory of optimization needs to be extended, for example, to game theory, because organisms interfere with, with, with each other. And therefore, um, sometimes the optimal state cannot be reached because the other one interferes and he or it also wants to um, optimize its properties. And uh, in some cases, um, both of them don't um, reach the optimum. And yeah, no, due to conflict or competition. And yeah, yesterday already I showed an example, namely sequential cross-feeding. And um, uh, yeah, you know, this is called consortium pathways. And I, I showed this, uh, that for example, um, in E. coli or other bacteria, um, two subpopulations emerge and one of them takes up glucose, uh, produces acetate or ethanol or some other uh, intermediate. And, um, and then the other one takes it up and uh, respires it uh, down to carbon dioxide and water. Uh, there might be also a subpopulation which does the, uh, which does the whole pathway, um, but let's consider uh, this case where well, uh, both of them to do a partial pathway. And uh, yeah, and this is a typical uh, game theoretical situation because um, each cell has two strategies ne, to become, uh, so to speak, the leader also the, the one who takes up glucose, which is the preferred substrate, or uh, the follower. And uh, it's impossible that both of them um, stay leader because uh, then, uh, oh sorry, the, the acetate uh, would uh, accumulate and would finally poison uh, the, uh, these cells. Therefore, it's important that a subpopulation uh, switches to the other um, uh, strategy and it's um, impossible either that all of them become follower because uh, if nobody produces acetate uh, there is no acetate uh, and therefore it's um, uh, yeah, obvious that there must be a, a division of labor. Um, yeah, um, actually, the talk, uh, the, this presentation I gave in an institute in Jena where they uh, deal with plants and herbivores, uh, uh, and uh, therefore it's a bit adapted to that, but uh, similar concepts can, of course, be applied to uh, microbial communities. communities. Um, so the idea is to um, think about defense chemicals, um, for example, uh, antibiotics, ne? Uh, um, defense chemicals produced by fungi against bacteria. Uh, yeah, they actually mentioned here. Um, and yeah, and then um, um, we, also we have these defense mechanisms, but we have also counter defense mechanisms. Yeah? Uh, for example, um, some bacteria produce uh, beta lactamases, uh, which degrade uh, penicillin or other beta lactam antibiotics. Ne? So the defense, and then the enzymes are the counter defense. Um, and yeah, and, and, and this is uh, also an in, uh, interesting. Uh, problem in game theory because then we can uh, have an endless cycle, so to speak, uh, because uh, assume that the, the inactivating enzyme is very efficient. Let's say the beta lactamase completely degrades penicillin. Um, then, uh, so first I should say uh, uh, both uh, sides have uh, two strategies ne, to produce the defense chemical or not to produce, and the other one produce the enzyme or, or not producing the enzyme. So, um, and 
Uh, yeah, and now if the enzyme is very efficient, then there is no point in producing the defense chemical anymore because it's inactivated anyway. So therefore, due to save costs, uh, the defending organism will stop producing it. But then uh, also there is no point in producing the enzyme anymore. So the other one will probably also stop um, producing the enzyme, but then the defense chemical becomes useful again, and then, but then the enzyme becomes useful again, and there, uh, this leads to this endless cycle. And this is an interesting problem in game theory. Uh, what is then the final uh, stable uh, situation um, which is achieved? Yeah, game theory was, um, yeah, I, I will uh, come back to that point uh, at the end of my talk if I have enough time. Um, and um, well, it was uh, introduced by John von Neumann in Princeton in the 1940s, um, and then later uh, John Maynard Smith uh, here in the UK um, uh, extend, also applied it to uh, biological uh, situations, and he came up with this uh, concept of evolutionary stable strategy, which is an extension of the concept of Nash equilibrium, which is very famous in game theory. So players can adopt strategies, uh, and then uh, important is to uh, assign payoffs um, to the um, um, to the strategies. Also, uh, if one player chooses uh, one strategy, for example, defense chemical, and the other one enzyme, then both of them get certain payoffs. Uh, this comes from economy, but is also used in biology. Sometimes it's not so easy to uh, assign or to quantitate the payoff. Uh, very often, uh, growth rate is taken uh, as the payoff, but it's, uh, also not so uh, simple in some case. For example, if we consider pathogens against the immune system, uh, what is the payoff for the immune system? We cannot really take the, the growth rate um, of, of higher um, organisms and then also is a question on, on which level is it then the growth rate of the entire organism or the growth rate of the macrophages or the other immune cells but they often die so they self-sacrifice yeah then they have a negative growth rate yeah, so this is sometimes not so easy but um, the, um, a good thing in game theory is that often only the order relation of the payoffs is important. Yeah? It's just important to know which strategy gives a higher payoff. Then whether it's tenfold higher or hundredfold higher is not so important. So the equilibrium situations are called Nash equilibria, um, um, called after John uh, Nash, uh, who also worked in Princeton. And um, yeah, a Nash equilibrium is a situation in which neither player can increase its payoff by changing strategy unilaterally. Yeah? This is important, unilaterally. Also, uh, there, also no coordination in action is, uh, is assumed. Uh, in some cases, this can be doubted. So actually, um, there is a lot of literature about the Nash equilibrium, whether it's really uh, applicable in human society, for example, because there is coordination between players going on. Um, but um, I think, uh, in, especially in microbiology, um, the concept of Nash equilibrium is very relevant because there is not so much communication and coordination. With, uh, there is, of course, some co communication, uh, but certainly less than in human society. And uh, then, uh, for example, in a situation where it would be better for both of them to change at the same time, uh, then they have to coordinate. And this is, of course, difficult for microorganisms. Uh, and, yeah, so uh, for example here, uh, let's take this example of two uh, vulvas, so they, um, let's assume two male vulvas uh, fight for, for a mating partner, for example, or for, for food, um, then um, they have two strategies, namely to, become very, uh, to, to be very aggressive or to, to, to uh, be peaceful or to, to surrender to the other one. Uh, this is the famous hawk-duff game, you know, the hawk is the aggressive one. And, uh, and if both were hawks, then they would fight so long that they damage each other. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, it, it's better if one of them then switches to the peaceful strategy and surrenders. You know, this is this uh, so, yeah, surrendering uh, posture. And, uh, and actually, the two Nash equilibria in the game are that uh, one of them surrenders or the other one. Uh, but then it's, uh, they have to decide somehow which of them. Uh, this is often done by some rituals. Um, and yeah, and um, yeah, and actually, yeah, and these rituals uh, show that there is often some iteration in in reaching the Nash equilibrium. This can nicely be shown by this example when two people um, pass each other on a sidewalk. You know, there are two uh, strategies: you know, going to the right or going to the left, which is for a continental European <laughs> very <laughs> striking in England because uh, I'm intuitively going to the right. Ah, no, I have to go to the left, <laughs> but. 
Actually, also in continental Europe, sometimes we go to the left because if you are already a little bit more to the left, then it's better to stay there rather than to switch back. And, and this can really lead to embarrassing situations, as you know, ne? if you and then both of them <laughs> go, uh, go back and forth. Um, and so and, and this is um, sometimes not mentioned in, in, in game theory textbooks ne? that um, it, it needs some iterations to, to reach the Nash equilibrium. No, they just say, oh, there's a Nash equilibrium, but there is a process to reaching it. And yeah, and then uh, there are, here there are two Nash equilibrium, either both go to the right or both go, go to the left, which is actually uh, the so called coordination game. No, they have to coordinate somehow. Uh, yeah, and this also Im Im often implies some, um, some communication. No? So after you, after you, the, uh, so the, of course, communication helps in reaching this. Um, Nash equilibrium. Yeah, then of course, a very famous game is the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, probably most of you know the, the cover story. Um, uh, and I think in the literature, often the, the prisoner's dilemma is a bit overstressed because it, it has so paradoxical properties ne, that uh, the Nash equilibrium is a situation where, uh, which is suboptimal. Ne? Both of them would be better off uh, taking another strategy. Um, but uh, in biology and also in many other situations, we don't only have the prisoner's dilemma, but also coordination game, uh, hawk duff game, stack hunt game. There are several others. I will show you a picture about it. Uh, yeah, then here there are some experiments. Uh, yeah, so, yeah so this is actually the so called payoff matrix of the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, if, uh, if both of them cooperate, they would, let's say, uh, get uh, three, uh, as a payoff of three each. And if both of them defect, then uh, both of them get two. And uh, it, it, both of them would be better off to uh, be here, but uh, they, it's not so easy to, to leave this Nash equilibrium because this is the stable situation because they, yeah, because the Nash equilibrium is defined as, uh, uh, as a, uh, stable with respect to unilateral strange ne? uh, change. So if only one of them changes, then, um, uh, he or she would not uh, get a higher payoff, but rather a lower payoff. Ne? Also, for example, if uh, it changes from here to here, then um, to, uh, it get, gets only one. So one is lower than two. Or in this way, from two to one, uh, it's also lower. And uh, only if both of them change at the same time, then they uh, would increase payoff. Um, yeah, there is, for example, um, uh, um, a situation related to that in, in tree growth. Uh, no, also, um, there is optimal tree height, but if some uh, um, tree is a bit larger, it gets more sunlight uh, and then it has an advantage, but the others also want to have more sunlight and then all of them grow uh, taller. Um, and then finally, none of them has an advantage over the neighbors, but uh, the Nash equilibrium is that all of them are a bit higher than the optimal um, uh, tree height. Uh, yeah, this can be here shown like this. Uh, so, but coming back to microbiology, um, and, um, a nice example are extracellular enzymes. Uh, in the previous talk, we heard about extracellular trehalose, which is probably also a game theoretical uh, problem. So my first intuition was that maybe the, the light cells are, are the cheaters. No? So the, the dark cells do the labor, so they, uh, they uh, produce trehalose to, to save it. And then the, the bad guys are coming and taking the trehalose, but it's my, um, maybe Sunil will interpret it in a different way, uh, but this was my first intuition. Uh, yeah, then the bad guys coming and taking the trailers and um, are becoming glycolytic. Um, yeah, but here it's a little bit different because here not a metabolite is excreted, but uh, an enzyme is excreted. Um, so, and there are, of course, um, many extracellular enzymes, also important for uh, degradation of xenobiotics. And uh, or for cellulose and lignin, especially for for macromolecules, ne? because macromolecules cannot be taken up, so they have to be digested extracellularly, and then the metabolites are taken up. Um, but it's also um, shown for yeast uh, for cleaving sucrose, which is not a macromolecular macromolecule. So it's an interesting question why is then uh, it's digested extracellularly, and uh, yeah, and there's a um, experiment by Greg and Travisano where they um, uh, um, considered two types of uh, yeast cells, namely um, some which um, uh, um, excrete um, uh, invertase. Ne? Invertase is the enzyme um, splitting uh, sucrose, 
and uh, yeah, in a sense cheater cells which don't secrete um, invertase, but they make use of the glucose produced by the other cells. No? So they uh, benefit from, them, from that. And they found that um, it depends on what they call sociality, which is practically cell density. Also at high cell density, the defectors have an advantage, and at low uh, density, the cooperators have an advantage. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, and already in the title of the paper, they spoke about the prisoner's dilemma. However, in the prisoner's dilemma, the uh, only stable strategy is that all cells uh, are cheaters or, or the, the, uh, defectors. And therefore, we become, became skeptical about it. And is it really a prisoner's dilemma? Um, yeah, it's, of course, important in biotechnology. And so we um, argued that it might be a hawk duff game. Right? So one is the hawk. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, um, also the, so in that sense, the hawk is the defector, no? so it's the, the aggressive strategy to, to take up um, the glucose, um, um, although it was not produced by these cells. And, and the dove, dove strategy is the, the peaceful strategy. And um, yeah, and then um, we, we published this, but uh, uh, another group was a bit faster and published it higher. We also tried it in nature, but failed. Um, so we published it in biotechnology journal. Um, so we, um, as both groups showed independently that uh, it's, uh, and it can be a prisoner's dilemma. It depends on parameters. Yeah? As it, namely, if the um, production and secretion of invertase is very costly, uh, then it becomes a prisoner's dilemma because then there is no point in being cooperative, which can, in the worst case, uh, lead to extin extinction of the population, uh, which is really a paradox um, because all of them switch to the um, defective strategy uh, and then they die out. And uh, yeah, I, I, but in the middle range, it can be hog, or is it hog duff game? And if uh, excretion is very cheap, then it becomes a harmony game. Uh, harmony means uh, uh, everyone cooperates with each other, everything is fine. Uh, and yeah, and to explain this, uh, what is the advantage of cooperators? Be uh, because if, uh, if there's always an incentive to, to cheat, then it would always be a prisoner's dilemma. However, there is an advantage uh, if we consider spatial organization. Also if it's not well mixed, then locally uh, cooperators have a higher um, uh, glucose concentration and at the Nash equilibrium, these two uh, effects compensate each other. Yeah? So locally more glucose, but they save the cost of, uh, um, uh, sorry, locally higher, but they have the cost of producing invertase. Yeah? And for defectors, it's the other way around. And um, yeah, um, yeah, then we did some model of that. And then we, we could actually nicely um, fit um, this, uh, these experimental points uh, by Greg and Travisano. Yeah, so here is uh, these, these three games, independence on cell density on, and costs. Uh, harmony game, uh, for example, penguins uh, standing together against the cold. This is an example of harmony game. So there is no incentive to leave the group. Um, here again, hog duff game, yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think this picture is very uh, interesting um, because in uh, also, uh, the games here, uh, I explained now are so-called two player, two strategy games. And in, uh, more, um, in addition, they are symmetric, as a symmetric two player, two strategy games. Whereas, for example, um, this uh, defense counter defense, this is an asymmetric game ne? because one of them produces a defense chemical, the other one an enzyme, so they have different strategies. But, uh, but for example, baker's yeast, if it produces invertase or not, then all cells are in the have the same situation, so to speak, uh, the same set of strategies, then it's a symmetric game. And for symmetric games, uh, we have four different um, payoffs, because the payoff for the other one is then, so to speak, uh, yeah, the opposite. And, um, uh, and then we can normalize it because I told you only the order relation is important. Therefore, we can normalize so that R equals one and P equals zero. And, um, and then we have only two degrees of freedom, namely S and T. You know, T is the so-called temptation, you know, the incentive to switch to the defective strategy. Uh, and then I like very much this uh, picture because it shows you the different game types. Yeah? So you have the prisoner's dilemma with a rather high tempta uh, temptation, uh, harmony, the, uh, Harmony one and harmony two, this is then uh, what the order relation between the lower payoffs uh, looks like, but it's not relevant for the Nash equilibrium. 
then a Deadlock, Battle of the Sexes, a very famous game, Hawk Duff game, Coordination 1, Coordination 2. Um, yeah, so I find this interesting also to look at biological games and to see which of these game types is realized. Uh, so, for example, in this uh, sequential cross feeding, um, it's um, so called um, uh, leader game. Uh, I forgot leader one or leader two, maybe it's uh, uh, leader three. Ah, yeah, and leader three is the same as Battle of the Sexes, but probably I don't have enough time to <laughs> explain this. Um, yeah, also. Um, in a sense, it's a little bit similar to the Hawk Duff game. Ne? Uh, we have uh, two Nash equilibria off the main diagonal. Also, either one cell becomes the leader and the other the follower, or the, uh, the other way around. And which of them, this is either by stochastic fluctuation, but uh, uh, so to speak, the um, the inner point is unstable. Yeah, and then by some fluctuation, it is decided to which side the system is um, falling down, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, then, yeah, Battle of the Sexes, yeah, and this, I don't have enough time. Uh, okay, yeah, then, <laughs> oh, oh, now it's, okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, then thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Stefan. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, yeah before, I don't know. Oh, well, Tom, you go first, maybe. Uh, Thanks very much. I, I know it was quite short, but I really enjoyed your talk. And uh, I, I wonder how we can gather evidence for, for evolutionary games happening in, in real communities. You've shown very elegant examples of, uh, of uh, two, three 